understanding the science and technology of adhesives is critical to making good instruments. When it comes to creating the perfect tone, understanding the tonal properties of each wood species is just as important as considering the physical properties of the adhesives we select, how we use them, and the strengths and resonances of the joints themselves. While it may seem like a rather bland topic under the surface, pun intended, there's some fascinating concepts to learn and understand. The engineering of musical instruments goes beyond just ensuring they are structurally sound. In addition to being able to withstand external forces and maintain stability over time, their resonant capabilities are of supreme importance. Musical instruments are either overbuilt or underbuilt, with the perfect construction lying somewhere between the two. Beyond this, we are at times required to make less than ideal structural decisions due to the nature of the materials used and their inherent properties. Understanding these joints, the materials used to bond them, and how they affect the instrument's tone is essential. My approach to this study goes a bit beyond the empirical, as I like to aid these decisions with at least a smattering of technical knowledge, along with a few of the lessons I've put together over time. I hope I provide a bit of insight into how I set and execute these kinds of design requirements. If this topic interests you and you want to read an interesting paper on the subject, check out this one. I'll leave a link in the description. I use many types of adhesives, including PVA glues like white glue, wood glues that are PVA glues with specific additives, and water-resistant formulas like Type On 2. Also, epoxy, cyanoacrylates, or superglue, and various hide glue formulas. In this video, I will demonstrate how I perform a few standard tasks while creating body stock for a run of custom base body. Also, I want to delve into the science and engineering behind these adhesives and impart a little knowledge of this topic I find so fascinating. Although this information primarily pertains to string instruments, it can be helpful in the design of any wooden structure. Consider following along, even if you're not involved in string instrument design and construction, as this information can help you think more about designing to specific requirements rather than simply overbuilding your project. Incorporating this knowledge can add an extra layer of art and engineering to your designs. If this is the case, take a moment to like and subscribe to support the development of more content like this. In Lu3, the first question to ask yourself, is the joint permanent or repairable? While it is possible to separate and repair PVA glue joints, it's not easy. On the other side, I often hear that the tonal qualities of high glue are superior. And in many cases, that is true to some degree. The reasons for this are simple. Hide glue will harden to a much more brittle structure, imparting less dampening than PVA formulas. Hide glue also fails with excessive atmospheric heat and moisture, requiring more care and caution with the instruments constructed this way. As we will discuss later, glue penetration may or may not contribute to a weaker joint with hide glue, depending on how it's used and applied. In the case of this electric bass guitar, these differences are negligible. Therefore, I choose an adhesive that is convenient, easy to use, simple to clean up and store, and reliable and resilient. I'm using Type On Original here for several reasons. In this case, it's the best option for the particular task. The joints are not repairable, so there's no need for them to be water resistant, and this is an electric instrument. Any benefits in resonance would be indistinguishable. In the past, I favored water-resistant PVA formulas, such as Type On 2. However, I've returned to using the original product as it has similar characteristics and is easy to clean up. I have many articles of clothing that still have Type On 2 permanently embedded into them, so I prefer working with the original formula and not worry about accidentally getting it on things that I don't want it permanently adhered to. It's rare for design requirements on instruments like these to include water submersion so I don't consider it a specification necessary for the kind of instruments I build, and that might be different in your case. Let's get to the details when it comes to the glue joints. There are a few factors at play. At a minimum, the players boil down to the interphase region, penetration, adhesion and cohesion, and wetting.
The grain structure of wood consists of a network of interconnected vessels, forming a stacked tube-like structure. The flatness of the interface between the two surfaces is critical, regardless of orientation, and the accuracy of these surfaces as they relate to each other correlates directly to the strength of the joint. In this project, there will be very few openings on the end grain for adhesive to penetrate. Therefore, we will try to fill the open gaps between vessels and around surface vessels if available, and if they are wetted properly, it will complete the interface. This drawback can be overcome by ensuring accurate joining surfaces, increasing the surface area, using effective wetting strategies, and applying adequate clamping forces. The concepts of adhesion and cohesion are interesting. Adhesion connects the adhesive to the substrate, while cohesion interlinks the adhesive with itself. The combined force determines the strength of the joint. Wetting affects adhesion and cohesion, as the interlinked chain and penetration are defined by wetting. Avoid falling into the trap of more is better. The cohesive relationship of PVA is much lower than when combined and interlinked with the wooden structure. A thin and even wetting will usually make for the best joint. Another vital role is surface wetting and its effect on adhesion, cohesion, and penetration depth. It's a common idea that if done correctly, the glue joint is stronger than the surrounding wood. When you think about it in these terms, it's accurate. The interlocking structure with good penetration adds stability and strength to this region, and when forced to the failure point, it'd be more likely to occur adjacent to the bonded surface. To overcome the disadvantages of these joints, it is vital to consider adhesive penetration, interfacing, and wetting. All of these joints are laterally oriented vessels connected to other laterally oriented surfaces. One way to think of this is attaching the side of a bundle of straws to the side of another. It's generally thought that ingrain joints are weaker than lateral joints, and in many cases this is true. In Luthery we are often presented with this problem, and there's usually no good solution. Understanding how preparing the surfaces, penetration, and wetting affect the situation can go a long way, as well as the concept of adhesion and cohesion. I hope this will get you thinking about the topic and how it impacts your work, and I appreciate that you have taken the time to stay with me through this video. Thanks for watching.